What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up a third person line trace that draws from the barrel of your weapon straight through whatever it is you might be aiming at with the center of the camera. So the beauty of this system is that we're going to be adding some random spread and depending on how close or far away you are, that random spread is going to be more or less but as you can see here, it is still always going to hit right where you're aiming your camera. So without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty guys, so I've got a third person character set up with a weapon and some very basic aiming and firing logic. If you want to see what that looks like, I've just got an aiming boolean here set on the right mouse button. And on the left mouse button, I'm setting a boolean can fire. And on condition that can fire is true, I'm playing an animation on my weapon, delaying by 0.1 of a second, and then looping back to that branch. When I release the left mouse button, it sets can fire as false, breaking this loop. So as I said, really basic, fully automatic uh, firing logic. And what we're gonna do is we're going to trigger our line trace logic as part of this. So I'm gonna create a custom event call it line trace and then I'm going to call line trace in here as part of my weapon firing logic just before the delay so every time the weapon fires I'm calling my line trace logic um, so this is where we're going to set up our line trace logic but first we're just going to do a couple of other things the first thing I'm going to do is select my weapon and browse to the asset here and find the skeleton of my weapon because what we're going to do is add a socket for the line trace to be drawn from. I'm going to right click on the root on the root bone here and add a socket. I'm going to rename it barrel and while I'm here I'm just going to control C that name so I have it saved um, but I'm also just going to remember I called it barrel all lowercase barrel and I'm going to move this socket right up in front of the barrel here. It doesn't have to be too perfect, just one or two millimeters in front of the barrel and as close to the center of the, center of the barrel as you can get it. That's fine right there. I'm going to save this and close this and the next thing I'm going to do is open up my project settings and search for trace channel. Trace channels and I'm going to create a new trace channel and call it targeting. I'm also going to create, create one called projectile. It's targeting one we're going to use um, with a line trace that's drawn from the center of the camera and we're going to use the hit point of that line trace as our targeting point. So we're going to draw a line trace from the barrel of our weapon through that hit point and then off at whatever distance we set. Um, so this is going to be a little complicated, but it is a pretty nice system and it's easy enough to set up once you know how. So just follow along and everything will be fine. Off of line trace here, I'm going to find a node called line trace by channel. And this is going to be our targeting. So I'm going to change the trace channel to targeting. Um, I'm going to drop this down and I'm just going to change the trace color to blue. Hit OK and change the draw debug type to for duration. Now the start point is going to be our camera. So grab our follow camera and get world location. That's going to be our start point. We're also going to off follow camera, get world rotation. Off of get world rotation, we can get the forward vector. And then we're going to multiply this by a float, right click on the pin and change to float single precision. And I'm going to make this 25 thousand for 250 meters so this is going to be the maximum range that you can basically hit something at 
Um, this might be different for you, but I'm gonna set this to 25,000. And then I am going to add my world location, add to my forward vector multiplied by big number, and that's gonna be our end point. Now, if I play now and I fire, you can see that I'm drawing a line trace from the center of the camera where those blue uh, where those blue squares are, where they're hitting, that's the uh, point at which we're going to draw our line trace through. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to drag off of out hit here and break hit result and drop this down and location here is the hit location. This is what we're going to be using. I'm also going to get my aiming variable and make a branch. And up here, I'm going to find another line trace by channel. This one, I'm going to set the trace channel to projectile. I will set the draw debug time to for duration. And I'll just leave this one as red. I'm going to duplicate that down here. This is going to be if I am aiming. This is going to be if I'm not aiming. Start point is going to be our socket that we created, so I'm going to grab weapon here and get socket location. I'm going to paste in the name. Oh, sorry, copied something else there. I'm going to write in the name here, barrel. Remember, it was all lowercase barrel. That's going to be our start location. Now, the end location is a little bit trickier. But if you follow along, I'm sure it will be fine. What we're going to do is grab the hit location from our targeting line trace. And off of that, we're going to subtract this socket location. Now, what this gives us is basically the vector from the barrel to that hit point that that blue line trace is hitting. It gives us that vector. Um, but we don't want the line trace to just end here. What we do want to do is make it uh, travel a certain distance from this from that barrel point um, and then we can add our spread at the end there um, so off of minus what we're going to do is then divide this by its own vector length sorry cannot type today vector length what this gives us is essentially the forward vector of that vector from the barrel to that hit point. This gives us a one unit uh, vector, so a one centimeter vector in that direction. Um, so now that we've got a one centimeter forward vector, we can then multiply this by whatever distance we want. So we can change this to float single precision, and I'm gonna make this 15,000 for 150 meters. And then I am going to add this to the location of this hit. If I uh, make this my end point now, I'm going to have to aim because I haven't set up the line trace for not aiming yet. So if I'm aiming, you can see my line trace is going through that same hit point. So the blue and red lines are meeting. Wherever I'm aiming, the blue and red lines are going to meet. And if I hit pause and then F8 to eject, what you'll see is it's going through that point and then it's continuing on. And the total length here is going to be 150 meters. And the reason we set it up this way is because if we want to add some random spread here, we, we want it to add at the end. We don't want to add it at this hit point. So this is the beauty of this. This will always be 150 meters long and we add the spread here. So the spread will be consistent depending on how far away from the target you are. Okay, so let's add some spread. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna add another pin here. Then we're going to split this one, split struct pin. And I'm going to find a random float in range, okay? Now you might have to play with these figures a little bit. Um, I'm gonna make this negative 150 to 150. Actually, let's make it negative 250 to 250. 
going to duplicate that. So it's spitting out three random numbers, one, one adding to the X, one adding to the Y, and one adding to the Z. And this will give us some random spread. So again, if I hit play, I'm aiming, got some random spread there. I can pause and hit F8 to eject. And you'll see that this spread is increasing over time. This is what it is at about 20 meters. And then at 150 meters, it's quite substantially more. Um, and just to demonstrate this, you know, exaggerate a little bit more, we'll set up the hip fire. Uh, the hip fire will be exactly the same, but with some different spread. So I'm just going to grab all of this here. I'm going to duplicate it down here. Actually, this reroute node, I can just plug straight into location. Just going to make some space here so there's a little bit less cluttered. Our socket location is going to be our start point. Our end point is all of this stuff added together. And just so to save me typing this in three times, I'm just going to do it once and then duplicate it. And I'm going to make this minus 750 to 750. Compile and save. And now I've got my aiming spread and I've got my hip fire spread. If I pause and hit F8 to eject, we can have a look at that hip fire spread and it is quite substantial. So you can make this whatever you like by tweaking those figures on the random float in range nodes. Very nice. Uh, one more thing I want to show you guys is just to make sure that this targeting channel is being put to use properly. What you want to do is let's say you have an enemy. I'm going to grab a blueprint here and I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put another many over here, turn them around and I'll just open up this one. And what I want to do is because I want the line trace to not hit the capsule component, I'm going to select the capsule component and search for collision. And then in my collision presets, I want to change this to custom and I'm going to ignore the targeting uh, trace channel. I'm also going to ignore the projectile trace channel because I don't actually want to hit the capsule component. I want to hit the mesh itself. So now I can select the mesh and I can make sure that these are both on block, blocking targeting, blocking projectile so that when I, and I'm just going to make this a little bit clearer by getting rid of the draw debug type on the targeting trace channel. So we don't need to draw that blue one anymore. Ah, uh, well, actually you want to see it at work, don't you? So just going to make sure that the blue one is hitting the mesh. It is very nice. If you wanted to add a um, add a crosshair to the center of the screen, um, you would see that these hit points are going to be pretty much exactly in the middle of the screen. So let's get rid of this draw debug now on the targeting line trace and just have a look at this in action. So we've got hip fire. And you can see the spread there is about the size of one square on the wall. And if we're further away, it's quite a lot more. And then with aiming down the sights, you got a really tight spread at about five meters, about 10 meters. And this is about 25 meters. Nice. That's it guys, that's all we set out to achieve. If this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.